Hi, this is Jerry Mikulski again with, uh, I guess this is uh, Jerry's Brain 102. And my apologies if I got a little carried away on the first one and started going off onto 1493 and potatoes and God knows what. Anyway, what I'd like to do right now is show you two things. One is how I actually set up my brain on my laptop and uh, feed it, how I uh, curate it. And the second is a particular tour through the tech industry, which is one of the first things that I learned, one of the first things I used the brain for. Uh, so right now we're looking at a thought called live streaming. Uh, it is under streaming media and under video broadcasting. It's different from short video sharing, which is another thought nearby. Uh, short video sharing is more like Vine uh, and all those things. So here's Vine, Prezi Nutshell, Cinemagran, Everlaps. I think I've got another cat category in here as well. Uh, mobile photo sharing, animated GIFs, Twitter acquisitions, etc., etc. Here's Twitter acquisitions, for example. Um, you're probably going to have to make your screen full size because I'm shooting a large screen with a lot of stuff on it, but I just really wanted to show you my native environment because I can see a lot more of my brain at one time than happens when I zoom in and make the brain small to fit the right resolution for shooting to YouTube. Uh, so I can use this little search uh, box uh, up top to look for anything, and I will look for uh, conspicuous, oop, helps when you spell it right, it's conspicuous consumption, and I don't have to spell the whole thing out, I just need to give it um, enough characters that it's probably unique within my brain. That was the list of all things that contained that character string uh, in my brain, so I just jumped from uh, Twitter acquisitions to conspicuous consumption and uh, which was a, a concept of Thorsten Veblen's, which he wrote about in the theory of the leisure class. And there's a, a thought I found today, uh, actually a Wikipedia page, conspicuous leisure, which I'd never heard of before. And what I'd like to do is show you how I would add this sort of thing to my brain. Uh, so this was in the theory of the leisure class, so might as well go here. Uh, the first thing I do is I think, well, here's a new concept where would I put it and in this case it should go under the theory of the leisure class and then we'll we'll do a couple more things with it uh, so I grab the URL which means grabbing the in this case because I'm a Chrome user and I don't know why they use the lock icon instead of the fav icon but I grab the little lock and I basically drag it across the page into the blue area and I let go that's all I have to do is drag it into the blue area and then I click over and I find that uh, it is picked up and usually it picks up not only the link, which you'll see down here, whoops, and I'm actually going to the page again, that was my mistake. Usually it not only picks up the link, uh, but it also picks up the name of the page. And in this, uh, in this case, I'm going to have to copy and paste that. So I'm gonna copy here, and then I'm going to uh, paste the link in here. Notice that I'm pretty, uh, pretty careful about initial caps and spelling and things like that. So I've just added the name of the page and the URL for the page under the theory of the leisure class. Now I should link conspicuous leisure to conspicuous consumption so I'll just grab the little gate drag it until I touch the other one conspicuous consumption and now the two thoughts will be found next to each other wherever I go so when I go to conspicuous consumption conspicuous leisure will be nearby. In fact come to think of it conspicuous leisure is probably a subset of conspicuous consumption so I'll just drag it below. Done. Now I can go back to conspicuous leisure in the, the, the theory of the leisure class and clearly this needs to be connected to leisure. So what I'm going to do, let me start that over again. I'm going to grab the top gate, click and drag up and then let go. And when I let go I get an open empty field. This open empty field says either give me the name of a thought that's already in this brain or create a new thought. And it's looking things up as I type. So when I say leisure it's actually looking through all of my namespace in my brain and it's finding all the thoughts that have the word leisure in them. And so leisure, leisure, the basis of culture, le uh, which is a book and then a post from Brain Pickings, uh, the origins of leisure in school, which is actually um, skola, in, in the, that's the Greek down there, a bunch of different things. Anyway, I really want to connect it to just the word leisure. So I picked that one, I hit return, and I have now made a link to something that already existed in my brain which is leisure. Now I click on leisure. It's under fun and rest. Uh, under it are things like athleisure, which is a category of clothing. It's a fashion trend, athletic inspiration, yoga gear, 
uh, and uh, Lululemon, for example, and Nike are busy fleshing out the athleisure segment right now as we speak. So if I go back to conspicuous leisure, I've now added this thought to my brain and I can, I can link it to anything I want. It's, uh, the brain doesn't care about circular references. The brain doesn't care how many things you link up and down to. It's non-hierarchical, which is what's really fun here. Um, but also the idea that you can only link up, down, or left which may seem like a constraint, like a, why would you do that? That seems crazy, is actually a beautiful, beautiful design uh, idea uh, that Harlan had 18, 20 years ago when he thought of this product, product. Because it means that things wind up being quite orderly when you look at them. As you add them, you have to think of, what is this connected to? What is this a part of? And that makes you decide where to put the new thought. But then as you nose around and look at, you know, Thorsten Veblen, uh, so I'm gonna click on him. And again, uh, I said in the first uh, in the first brain cast that these icons meant that there was a link connected. I mean that there's this URL down here. And if I click on the icon, it launches my browser to that page. So here we are launching my Chrome browser in a new tab to the page on Thorsten Veblen. Uh, conversely, I was picking up the page on conspicuous consumption a moment ago, conspicuous leisure, sorry, uh, and figuring out where to put that. Uh, so conspicuous leisure is now uh, featured in my brain. So let me actually go to a, a new place and show you uh, a way of looking around the brain that might seem pretty interesting. Uh, let's go to Andreessen Horowitz. Oops, too many R's, too many E's, too many, too many everything's. Uh, there we go. Got to spell it right. So I just jumped through my brain uh, through 292,000 thoughts to Andreessen Horowitz, also known as A16Z, uh, the venture capital firm founded in 2009 by Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz, uh, which is a, a big player in Silicon Valley at this point. They're a different and very interesting VC. Uh, so on the left, you'll see some, by no means all, but some of their portfolio, right? So they invested in these kinds of companies. And I use these lateral links um, for investments, for public relations, for law firms, uh, basically for service relationships to companies. I also put companies under their categories. So here's other VCs. And if I click on that, Andreessen Horowitz is next to Avatar Capital Partners, Azure Capital, Balderton, Bank America Ventures, Base Ventures, Base Lion Ventures, Battery Ventures, etc. If I click on any of those, uh, you'll see why I put them in, which is in this case with Baseline. Uh, this is Ron Conway's venture fund. Uh, he invested in CoTweet and Co Go Instant and Instagram, uh, which was founded in 2010 as Bourbon. So if I click on Instagram, we go to Instagram and we see that they took money from Andreessen Horowitz and Baseline and Benchmark. If I click on Benchmark, I can then see that they invested in Asana, Broadbase, Cashflow, Couchsurfing. I don't remember Broadbase. What was Broadbase? If I click on them, they go in the middle. Oh, they're horizontally user tracking and they were part of Kana software. And Kana, I really actually like Kana a lot when they first came out. They were about customer engagement management, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, they got money from Draper Richards, which um, also invested in Link Exchange. So I challenge you to tell me about any other piece of software, any other piece of software that lets you do this that lets you wander through an industry in this way, that lets you curate it without switching into editing mode, without doing database entries, nothing like that. I'm constantly in one environment. I'm feeding it. I'm always moving things around. I'm always improving it a little bit every day, day after day for 18 and a half years at this point. Um, this is why I like this software so much. And I wish it were more collaborative and I wish it were more open, but this is a fantastic piece of software. Thanks for listening to uh, Braincast 102.